Hey everybody, Nicholas here, and I'm going out for a little bit of raccoon hunting on a lovely Saturday night. Tonight is really the first good rain we've had in quite a while, so it seemed like a great opportunity to get the dogs out. Uh, tonight I only have two dogs out with me. I have um, two of my one and a half year old blue dogs who are uh, the puppies from Cooley that she had last year. Um, so I have Bruno here. He's a very, very handsome fella. It's kind of hard to see in the dark, but um, yep. We've got Bruno. We're going to see what he can do. And I have Bruno's brother, Clover. So these two boys, um, they had their first full hunting season last year, and they did really good. Got them on a lot of raccoons, got them on a handful of bobcats. Um, this year, I'm going to try to get them on a bunch of raccoons because I just want to get them on as much game as possible. Uh, they're still, you know, super early in their hunting career, so we got a lot of work to do with them, um, but they handle great. Um, they're super smart dogs, extremely athletic. I'm just in love with them, if you can't tell. Um, I'm going to be trying to kind of keep track of their progress and keep you guys updated on their progress throughout this whole season. So, yep, tonight this episode is all about Bruno and Clover, so let's get into it. So normally, if you've watched my videos, uh, you know that I usually roll with a lot more dogs than this. Um, but there's a couple reasons why I only have these two tonight. First, uh, their sister Tika is in heat. So obviously, we don't want them breeding. Um, man, they are not doing so great on the leash right now. Holy cow. This is their first, this is their first night out of the season, other than the little... Uh, exercise session we did two weeks ago two three weeks ago uh, so yeah i've also haven't really had them on a leash too much like this um well hold up let's go this way nope we got to keep going in come on guys come on okay real quick just a little bit of foreshadowing at this point right here you see the dogs wanting to go straight into the woods and as you'll find out later in the video it was for good reason it really was too bad that I couldn't have cut them loose at that point for fear of them ending up in one of the nearby farmer's backyards. We just don't want that. One more thing, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and hit the notification bell so you'll know right when the next video drops. Onward. We gotta go in further. Can't cut loose yet. Nope, come on, hey, Bruno, holy cow. Holy cow, come on, let's go. Yeah. Hey, come on, we gotta keep going. This is a very, uh, this is a great spot for raccoons, but there are, uh, hey, come on guys, come on. Great spot for raccoons. We're just a little close to some houses, so we gotta walk in quite a ways. Um, gotta walk in quite a ways before we can actually cut them loose. But they're freaking winding something. And like I said, these are, they're only a year and a half years old, a year and a half, so um, they might want to run anything. I've done a fair amount of deer breaking with them. All right, trying to keep them in a heel. I don't have my walking stick with me, so it makes it a little more difficult. Now, if you are interpreting that as thinking that I just beat them with the walking sip stick, you would be incorrect. Do not beat them with the walking stick. I simply use it to hold a boundary and you know basically just keep them behind me because i really don't like walking like this this is awful um man they're amped up so oh well we're, we're doing what we can um but yeah tika is in heat so she couldn't come out with us and the rest of the dogs i don't want them messing with raccoons so uh, yeah, what I was saying is Cooley and Rue have been on a lot of raccoons and my main goals with them are to get them on bobcats, which bobcat, you know, treating raccoons is difficult in its own way. Um, but the tracks are so short usually, whereas bobcat tracks are very long, and very challenging usually so what i found is that like cooley she's so used to just tree and raccoons that it's like her brain isn't wired right 
to, to move a long, complicated track with lots of losses, you know, lots of, uh, lots of, lots of, lots of, basically not just a straight line, not just a pop-up. So that's why they're staying home. They're not going to come on any raccoon hunts with me. Probably ever. Because we're focused on bobcats. But these boys, they just need to get on game. They need to work tracks. They need to build up those skills. Um, so, so that's what we're doing. All right, I think I'm far enough in here that I can cut them loose. To my right, there is an apple orchard. To my left, there's a big series of, I would call them lagoons. Um, this is a river bottom. So we got the, a big river, big Ur River, all the way over to my left, about maybe a quarter mile. So we are right on that river. Um, but then there's a series of lagoons and, you know, lots of water. There's tons of food around here. So this is all agriculture land. Um, apples, cherries, peaches, hazelnuts. But tonight, my theory is that if the raccoons are out feeding on anything, they will be out feeding on worms. So today we had our first, you know, serious rain. In a while, anyway. I think a few weeks ago we had it dumped a bit, but yeah, like to, this feels like fall and winter are finally here. Um, and what I have observed is that when it rains like that, it gets, it causes the, uh, the earthworms to come out of the ground. And I have seen a lot of raccoons, you know, just driving around. I've seen a lot of raccoons uh, out in the fields and on the side of the road eating worms off the ground. And I've cut their guts open, you know, on the ones I've harvested. And yeah, a lot of times they're just packed full of worms. So tonight feels like a good night. We're in far enough. So it, it's time to cut them loose. I can't do that in film at the same time. So just give me a second. All right, so I cut them loose. They went straight into the woods. There is a little road that goes through this area um, and it happens to be paved. So I like to walk on the paved road because it makes for easy walking. Um, but yeah, they're off, they're hunting. That's what I love about these dogs. You cut them loose and they take off. They go hunting. And I feel like they get that from Cooley. Um, just that intense drive to go find something. All right, so I'm rocking the TT25s, the, uh, the Garmin TT25 collars on these dogs here. Um, and I'm trying out the, so these new collars, they have colored lights, which is pretty cool. The old, the TT15s, uh, you probably know, they only had a white light. And I actually didn't like using those at all because I felt like they screwed with the dog's vision. Um, but these colored lights are way more subdued. I don't feel like they're gonna have the same effect. Um, this is actually the first time I've used the different colors actually out hunting so it's kind of cool to be able to see who's who like that so one thing i don't necessarily like about this place and it's just like what can you do is that it's packed full of coyotes they seem to hang out in different areas at different times and usually you'll hear them i haven't heard any so far uh, but who knows, they might still be out here. The problem is, I am not, I don't know enough to know <laughs> just based on their track if they're running a raccoon or if they're running a coyote. So I'm going to try to keep up with these dogs as best as I can so that, um, yeah, if they do, you know, like straight up jump something, I'll be able to catch them and correct them. I feel comfortable correcting them on you know trash at this point they're still young but they've been on a lot of raccoons so i know they know what they're supposed to be looking for 
and I have done some trash breaking with deer on them. Um, so yeah, they might get lit up a little bit if they decide to run off game tonight. And that's just part of the process. What a handsome boy. I have treed a number of raccoons in this tree before. And one time I think there was eight raccoons in this tree. That's the thing about this place. It seems like the animals, the raccoons, they move around like a tr like in a troop, like monkeys here. It's either totally dead, kind of like it is tonight, or just one after another. Um, or we will tree all the raccoons at once. <laughs> but so far, they haven't even barked yet. Actually, that is incorrect. If you were paying attention, Bruno did in fact bark a single time yeah. hey. when they were winding that thing right when we walked in. And as you'll see in a few minutes, I'm counting that as a strike. It really is too bad I couldn't have cut them loose back there couple bits of excitement but but yeah uh, not a lot of action so far but it's still great to get them out here that's a thick chunk of blackberry bushes I'm always amazed at how the dogs can get through those things. I mean, it's just wild. Just burrowing his way through there. <laughs> he may be regretting his actions of going in there. Or it could be a little game trail. A little game tunnel, more like it. All right, so while well, you kind of turned around, we're heading back to the truck. Not a lot of action tonight, and I don't know why, and I'll never know why. They're still hunting though. They were very interested in this little patch of trees when we crossed it the first time, and 
they're in there again. The problem is I've found a lot of skunks around here and it seems like, like an irrigation pipe. I feel I've, I've always seen them around these irrigation pipes. I don't know if the skunks actually go in the pipes or what, um, but I, I usually like avoiding these. So I'm gonna tone them to, to come back to me. So let's see. Hey, come on guys, let's go. Let's go. Good boys. Good boys. Good boys. Oh. That was kind of weird. Bruno just acted like he saw something and then took off sprinting down the road. I didn't see anything and I was looking in the same direction. So he maybe just caught reflection off of something. I'm not sure. Something caught their attention over here. They were intently sniffing that spot right there. So like I was saying, we're right by an apple orchard and just look at this tree. It is loaded with apples, gorgeous apples. Unfortunately, I don't have permission to hunt over there. Um, and I'm kind of a goody two shoes when it comes to trespassing. So I'm not even gonna take one of those delicious looking apples. I really wish I could though. Man, those look good. Dang. Yeah, I've seen a lot of raccoons in this orchard. I've seen like five raccoons just sitting in one tree, just chomping down on apples. I'm surprised. I'm surprised we haven't haven't got anything going. I'm surprised we haven't seen any any layups. Don't know what's going on. Oh well, we are uh, getting close, getting to the point where I need to leash these dogs back up. So I'm gonna do that, and I'll give you a little wrap up once we get back to the truck. All right, they're doing better. They're doing better at heel. Heck yeah, good job. Good dog, nope. There we go. There we go, that's right. Well, this is where they winged something last time. All right, Bruno's getting all excited. So is Clover. And uh, the reason why is they're winding a raccoon. I, I know it. Um, and the reason how, how, the way I know it is that right over there, I just shined my light over there and I saw eyeballs in a tree. So, yep, this is exactly where they were getting all excited when we were walking in. So my guess is that that raccoon was kind of feeding along here and then ran across that field and climbed a tree. Um, unfortunately that's, it's true. It's basically treed, um, practically in somebody's backyard. I mean, we are right up against some houses and that would probably not be very good if we, if these dogs treed that sucker right there in their backyard. So kind of sucks when that happens because, hey, these dogs are doing what they're supposed to. 
but it's just our circumstances won't allow us to capitalize on the opportunity as it were and we're almost back to the truck so i think we're gonna call it see you later everybody